hello everyone welcome to the yarn bowl today in this video i'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful mermaid tail bottle bag uh, this is a cute inset that i have designed and you can download it for free from my blog the link for that is available in the description and uh, i'm going to show you how to crochet this bottle bag for uh, the small bottles which is 500 ml and if you want to uh, work the same bottle bag for a larger size for example like a one liter bottle you can uh, uh, download the pattern link uh, it's a single pdf file which includes both the small bottle and the bigger bottle patterns you can download it from my etsy page link for that is available in the description as well and if you want a free written pattern of this uh, bottle bag for a smaller size bottle it's available in my blog the yarnbullcrochet.com link for that is available in the description if you have an instagram account do follow me on my instagram account as well where i post project updates and fun reels meanwhile if you are new to this channel please do not forget to subscribe to the yarn bowl and click on the bell icon as well so that you get notified whenever I post a new video so this is the bottle bag that we are going to work today so I'm going to show you how to work the bag for a smaller size which will hold about uh, 500 ml of water bottles and uh, um, today I'm going to show you how to crochet this bag and if you want to crochet the same bag for uh, larger size bottles to hold larger size bottle like uh, say for a, um, a one liter bottle you can uh, find the pattern link which will take you to my Etsy page and you can find all the links in the description um, in this video I'm going to show you how to crochet this bottle bag for a smaller size which will hold small bottles and uh, a standard 500 ml water bottle and I'm going to use uh, retro stripes yarn from red heart super saver for working this bag this is a nice neon ombre shade yarn which will look good for this bag and uh, we're going to need a um, stitch marker and a 5 millimeter crochet hook and uh, a tapestry needle and a scissor for working this project. So for round 1 I'm going to work a magic ring and on the magic ring I'm going to work a chain 1. This chain 1 does not count as a stitch and then I'm going to work 10 half double crochet stitches on the magic ring and once i work 10 half double crochet stitches i'm gonna work a slip stitch on top of my starting half double crochet stitch to close this round one so at the end of round one i'm gonna have uh, 10 half double crochet stitches and once you have worked your round one um, you're gonna tighten the magic ring and uh, i just marked my first stitch with a stitch marker because I'm not going to confuse myself with the chain one that I just worked. So always mark your first half double crochet stitch with a stitch marker. And uh, proceed working 10 half double crochet stitches around the magic ring. And once you're done, you're going to tighten the magic ring. And work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close around one. And... Uh, at the end of round one you're going to have 10 half double crochet stitches and uh, now you can secure your magic ring with a knot and proceed working round two now for round two you're once again going to work a chain one which does not count as a stitch and then i'm going to work two half double crochet stitches on each stitch of round one so work two half double crochet stitch on each stitch around and once you are done you're gonna work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close this round two so at the end of round two you're gonna have 20 half double crochet stitches so continue working round two we'll meet at the end of round two now I have completed my round 2. I am going to work a slip stitch 
on top of my starting half double crochet stitch so we're gonna have 20 half double crochet stitches at the end of round two now for round three I'm gonna once again work chain one which does not count as a stitch now I'll work one half double crochet stitch on my first stitch and then I'm gonna work two half double crochet stitch on the next stitch so I'm gonna repeat this pattern around that is I'll work one half double crochet stitch on one stitch and two half double crochet stitch on the next stitch around so at the end of round three I'm gonna have 30 half double crochet stitches so once I'm done with round three work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close this round three so at the end of round three I'll have 30 half double crochet stitches so proceed working round three I'll meet you at the end of round three So now we are going to work a slip stitch on top of my starting half double crochet stitch to close this round three. So now we are going to work the body of the bag. So for that for round four I'm going to work a chain one which does not count as a stitch and then I'm going to locate the back loop of my stitch of round three and I'm going to work one half double crochet on it. And I'm going to work one half double crochet on the back loop of each stitch around. So pick only the back loop of each stitch and work one half double crochet stitch on it. So continue working one half double crochet on the back loop of each stitch around. And uh, once done, you're going to work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close this round four. So at the end of round 4 we are still going to have 30 stitches. Now for round 5 I am going to work a chain 1 which does not count as a stitch and then I am going to uh, gently turn my stitch. You can find the third loop there right behind the V's and you are going to pick it up and work one half double crochet on it. So we are going to work one third loop half double crochet stitch on each stitch around. So work one half double crochet on the third loop of each stitch around and once done work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close this round five so at the end of round five you should still have 30 stitches so continue working one half double crochet on the third loop of each stitch around for round five So now we have uh, worked our third loop half double crochet stitches. I'm going to work a slip stitch on top of my starting half double crochet stitch to close this round. Now we're going to work a stitch called pebble stitch for our next round. So these are nice uh, bobble like stitches which we're going to work. So I'll show you how to work our pebble stitch. So this is nothing like a bobble stitch. We're just going to yarn over, insert the hook on the same stitch for three times and uh, pull through all the loops. I'm going to show you how to do this. So always we work pebble stitch on the wrong side. So we're going to turn our work on the wrong side. So turn your work on the wrong side, work a chain one and work one single crochet on the first stitch. Now yarn over. Insert your hook on the stitch, pull up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, insert your hook on the same stitch, pull up a loop. You have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, insert your hook on the same stitch, pull up a loop. You have seven loops on the hook. Now you'll yarn over, pull through all the seven loops. Now work one single crochet on the next stitch. Now if you turn your work to the right side, you can see the nice bobble like pebble stitch worked. Now we're going to repeat the same thing again. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook on the stitch, pull up a loop and then you will repeat working, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop two more times 
on the same stitch you will end up having seven loops on the hook you will yarn over pull through all the seven loops and then immediately work one single crochet on the next stitch so now we are going to repeat working pebble stitch in one stitch and one single crochet on the next stitch around so since we have started with the single crochet on the first stitch we are going to work a pebble stitch on the next stitch and we are going to repeat this sequence around that is we are going to work one single crochet in one stitch and one pebble stitch on the next stitch around and we work everything on the wrong side so always remember when we are going to work our pebble stitches we are going to work a chain one turn to the wrong side and continue working one single crochet in one stitch and one pebble stitch on the next stitch so keep repeating this around and uh, you should end up having 15 single crochet stitches and 15 pebble stitches so now I'm gonna work my pebble stitch on the last stitch and once done I'm going to work a slip stitch on top of my starting single crochet stitch and now I'm going to work a chain one for round seven and turn to the right side and work one half double crochet on the single crochet of the previous round and work one half double crochet on the pebble stitch of the previous round that is I'm going to work one half double crochet on each stitch of round six around so always remember only the pebble stitch rounds we are going to work on the wrong side all other rounds we are going to work on the right side and now continue working one half double crochet on each stitch around and once done we are going to work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close this round seven so at the end of round seven you will have 30 half double crochet stitches now as we have done earlier for the next round we are going to work third loop half double crochet stitches so for round eight i'm going to work a chain one which does not count as a stitch then i'm going to tilt my work to find my third loop and work one half double crochet on it mark your first stitch with a stitch marker and then go ahead work one half double crochet on the third loop of each stitch around so go ahead work one half double crochet on the third loop of each stitch around and one step work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close this round eight so at the end of round eight we will have 30 third loop half double crochet stitches and once worked work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch now from round 9 to round 20 we are just going to repeat round a 6 to 8 we're going to work one pebble stitch round one half double crochet stitch round and one third loop half double crochet stitch round and we are going to repeat this until we reach round number 20 so now i'm going to work round 9 which is my pebble stitch round i work chain one turn my work to the wrong side and then i work one single crochet in my first stitch and then i work one pebble stitch on my next stitch and i keep repeating this around i work one single crochet in one stitch and one pebble stitch on the next stitch around and uh, i should have 15 single crochet stitch and uh, 15 uh, pebble stitch once i complete this round and as i told you earlier we are going to repeat working round 6 to round 8 until we reach round number 20 so keep working this pebble stitch round around which will be our round 9 and uh, that's it keep repeating these rounds that is from round 6 to round 8 until we reach round 20 now i have worked my pebble stitch round next will be working the half double crochet stitch round so like we did before so we're going to repeat these three rounds over and over again until we reach round number 20 
so we should have five rounds of pebble stitches for our bag which is our small bottle bag so until we reach round number 20 keep repeating these rounds and I'll show you how to finish off this bag and uh, always make sure you have the correct stitch counts at the end of each round so now you can see I have worked until round 18 I have to work two more rounds which will be the half double crochet round and third loop half double crochet round so this is my last round of pebble stitch this is round 18 and next I'm gonna um, work the half double crochet stitch round so I'm gonna work a chain one turn my work and continue working one half double crochet on each stitch around and once done I'm going to work a slip stitch on top of my starting half double crochet stitch So now that is done I'm going to work a slip stitch on top of my starting half double crochet stitch and next I'm going to work a chain one and then continue working one half double crochet stitch on the third loop of each stitch around. So keep working one half double crochet on the third loop of each stitch around and once done work a slip stitch on top of your starting half double crochet stitch to close this round 20 and uh, this is the last round of our bag we have one more uh, slip stitch round and then we'll proceed working the straps for the bag so now i'm going to end this round 20 by working a slip stitch on top of my starting half double crochet stitch and next you're going to work a chain one for round 21 and then work one slip stitch on each stitch around so this will give a nice border for your bag so the chain one does not count as a stitch and then continue working one slip stitch on each stitch around and then work a slip stitch on top of your starting stitch to close this round 21 so proceed working slip stitches around i'll meet you at the end of this round So now I'm going to work a slip stitch on top of my starting stitch and do not fasten off your work we are going to work our bag straps right away. So for working the bag strap it totally depends on you. Um, I have worked two different strap sizes one for the uh, small kits this one that I worked earlier is for small kits which I work 65 chains. So now I'm going to work um, the strap that will be functional for big kids so let's see how to work the straps so you can vary the uh, number of chains according to your requirement so now I'm going to work big kid strap so I'll work one slip stitch on the next stitch and uh, work 88 chains so continue working 88 chains So now once you work 88 chains make sure your chain is not twisted and uh, you're gonna skip 14 stitches so continue skipping 14 stitch counts and work a slip stitch on the next stitch after skipping 14 stitches before you work your slip stitch make sure your chain is not twisted and uh, work one more slip stitch on the next stitch so you have your straps attached we'll make this into a cord soon and now once you have worked a slip stitch work one more slip stitch on the next stitch and then you can work a chain one and then 
work one slip stitch on each chain on the reverse side go ahead work one slip stitch on each chain on the reverse or backwards so working this way will turn your chain into a nice cord which will look like a strap for your bag and go ahead work one slip stitch on each chain till you reach chain one so this is going to look like an eye cord and it will be a little sturdy as well so work one slip stitch on each chain backwards till you reach chain one So now we have worked slip stitches till we reached our chain one. Now I am going to work one slip stitch on the starting stitch. And you can fasten off and leave your ends. And uh, you are done with the body of your bag. If you don't want the tail or the, you don't want the mama tail, you can use this bag as is. Um, I am going to attach a a mermaid tail to it this bag which is going to look even more colorful so I'm just uh, weaving off the ends and uh, the bottle bag is ready now I'm going to work the mermaid tail for the bag so this is the mermaid tail here and uh, we're going to make this separate and then uh, sew this tail to the bottom of the bag and this is a normal uh, back uh, loop single crochet ribbing that we use in uh, our hat patterns in many of my hat patterns so I use these uh, ribbing for the brim of the hat and we are going to work in a way that it's going to look like a mermaid tail so for this small kids bag, I'm going to work a slip knot and then I'm going to go ahead work 20 chains. Go ahead work 20 chains. Once you have worked 20 chains, work one single crochet on the second chain from the hook and then go ahead work one single crochet on each chain till the end. So go ahead work one single crochet on each chain till the end. So now our uh, row 1 is complete. For row 2 I am going to work a chain 1, turn and then I am going to work 1 single crochet on the back loop of each stitch for next 17 stitches I'll have two stitches left in which I'm going to work single crochet two together so work one back loop single crochet stitch on each stitch until we have two stitches left or work one back loop single crochet stitch for next 17 stitches so go ahead work one back loop single crochet stitch for next 17 stitches so now you can see the ribbing that's coming up now I have two stitches left and I'm going to work single crochet two together in the last two stitches and now I'm going to work a chain one turn and then I'm going to work single crochet two together in starting two stitches and then I will work one single crochet stitch on the back loop of each stitch till the end. So work one single crochet on the back loop of each stitch till the end. So 
so now you should have 17 stitches now for row, row 4 we are going to work a chain 1 turn your work and then I'm going to work one single crochet on the back loop of each stitch for the next 15 stitches or until I have two stitches left and I'm going to work one uh, I'm going to work back loop single crochet two together in last two stitches so we're going to in decrease in only one side of our work which is going to uh, look like a fin on the other side we are going to not decrease our work so now for row 5 we are going to chain one turn and as I told you we are going to work single crochet two together on the back loop of first two stitches and then I will work one back loop single crochet on each stitch till the end so I should have 15 stitches at the end of row 5 so we are decreasing on each row on only one side so this is should shape your uh, ribbing like a um, tail or fin so we are not going to decrease both sides we are always going to decrease in only one side so now for row 6 I'm going to work a chain one turn and then I'm going to work one back loop single crochet stitch on each stitch for next 13 stitches or I have two stitches left and I will work back loop single crochet two together in last two stitches so I will have 14 stitches at the end of row 6 so we're going to repeat working like this creating rib and decreasing only on one side so now for round 7 I'm going to work single crochet two together on the back loop of first two stitches and then I will work one back loop single crochet stitch on each stitch till the end so I'm gonna have 13 stitches at the end of row 7 so we're always going to decrease in only one side so we will end one row with the decrease and we'll start the other row with the decrease so we have we are, we are going to continue working like this until we reach six stitches so once we reach six stitches we're going to start our increase so that will look like a mermaid tail so now for our increase i'm going to chain one turn for our row 15 and then i'm going to work two single crochet stitches on the back loop of my first stitch and then I will work one back loop single crochet stitch on each stitch till the end so for the decrease we work single crochet two together and now for increase we are going to work two single crochet stitches and now for row 16 I'm going to chain one turn and then I will work one single crochet on each stitch for next six stitches and then I will work two single crochet stitch on my last stitch so this is gonna increase our stitch count to eight stitches so we're gonna increase one stitch count at the end of each row now for row 17 I'm gonna work a chain one turn and then I will work two single crochet on my first stitch on the back loop and then I will work one back loop single crochet for on each stitch till the end so now our stitch count is going to increase to 9 so as we did for decrease we are going to increase only on one side and we are going to keep doing this until we have 19 stitch counts so keep working on the increase for every row so now for row 18 I'm going to increase my stitch count to 10 stitches I'm going to work one single crochet stitch on the back loop of each stitch till then on on the last stitch I'm going to work two back loop single crochet stitches now for row 19 I'm going to work a chain one turn and then I will work 
two single crochet stitches on the back loop of my first stitch and then I will work one single crochet stitch on the back loop of each stitch till the end. So now my stitch count will be increased to 11 stitches at the end of row 19. So now you must know how to in work the increases. So keep repeating this until we have 19 stitch counts. So we're going to repeat this until we have 19 stitches. So now I'm on my last row of increase and make sure your uh, yarn is at the top part while you finish off. So even if you made some mistake and you're at the tip or at the fin, a uh, tip of the fin, we cannot stitch your tail. Make sure you work back loop single crochet stitches and come to the top part where we don't work our increase or decreases. And once you finish off your last row, leave a long tail for sewing your tail and then work a slip stitch. Now attach your long end of yarn to a tapestry needle and work through your ribbing and gently pull off to tighten your tail which will look even more like a fin and once you're done with that you can start stitching your tail to the back so follow along the video and see how we are going to attach this tail to the back Now once you have uh, sewed in the tail to the back, you can work slip stitches and uh, weave your ends and fasten up all the odd ends of the yarn. Now we have sewed our permit tail to the bottle back. It looks super cute and colorful and uh, it's a super quick project as well. So as I told you earlier, you can adjust the chain counts for the strap based on your requirement so this will hold your uh, small water bottles or uh, the standard 500 ml water bottle that you get in stores such a perfect summertime project and kids will enjoy taking this bottle back for beach or outings so i hope you enjoyed this pattern and uh, please try this uh, pattern at home and let me know your comments and uh, you can also work the same bottle pack for bigger bottles to hold a one liter bottle or a bigger size water bottle. So if you want to work um, the same bag for a bigger size bottle, you can find uh, the downloadable pattern link which will take you to my Etsy page. You can download a single PDF file for both these bottle size bags uh, from my Etsy. And uh, if you want a free written pattern, of this smaller size water bottle bag you can find it in my blog the yarnbowlcrochet.com i have posted all links in the description box do check out and you can also download the free template of the bottle bag from my blog and if you have an instagram account do follow me on my instagram where i post project updates and fun reels and i hope you enjoyed this bottle bag tutorial please do not forget to subscribe to the yarn bowl and click on the bell icon as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.